Hello everyone. In this video, we'll go over um, standardizing the variables and running a regression with standardized variables. What is standardization? Now, if you remember from your stats and data analytics class, standardization is essentially computing a z-score for each of your, for, for the variable of interest. And how do you compute a z-score? You take that observation, subtract the mean from that observation, and divide it by the standard deviation. So the simplest z-score uh, that you hopefully remember should be this. Okay. I'm hoping this rings a bell. So this process where you subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation is called uh, standardizing the variable. Now, why is standardization of interest to us? Sometimes we'll be dealing with variables that are measured in their own specific scale. The best example for this is test scores from different standardized exams. So if you take the GRE, the scores, the maximum score that one could get is 340. If you take the SAT, the maximum score is, I think, say, I think it's 1600. So when you're talking about a student's performance in these scores, a one a one unit increase or you know uh, an increase in by one score may mean different things for different exams. So in order to be do away with this confusion, what we could do is we can uh, redefine the variables such that they lose these units, they become unit free. Meaning, I can I I want to do something which enables me to compare change in the GRE score with say change in the SAT score. I mean, uh, compare in the sense I can speak about it in the same measurement, in the same sen units of measurement. So standardization helps us achieve this process. So we talk about uh, z-scores are essentially how many standard deviations away from the mean a particular observation is. So once you compute a z-score for whatever variable you're interested in, you can then say for a one standard deviation increase in that variable, what happens to y? Uh, for a one standard deviation increase in the SAT score, what happens to the student's uh, wage, uh, wages later on, or students' college GPA, so on and so forth. So in this slide, we're going to be learning about the regression where every single variable in our, uh, in our system, the Y as well as all the regressors, X1 to XK, all of them have been standardized. So how do we do that? I'm going to very quickly walk you through the through the math here. Uh, so we start off with our original regression equation where yi is now, uh, so you see that written on the slide right there. yi is a function of, I mean, this is the regression where you have this intercept and a bunch of slope coefficients. I write that down first. And then I write a regression where I replace every single variable with its average. So instead of yi, I write y bar. Instead of x, x1i, I write x1 bar. And then I write x2 bar for x2i and goes on up to xk bar. So if you re recall, one of the properties of the regression model, linear regression model, is that it goes through the averages of all variables. So, and this statement that I've written is perfectly valid. It actually just comes from summing over the first case. Uh, taking a summation and then dividing throughout by n. That will give you this model that I've written just in terms of averages. Now, once you have these two, write down yi minus y bar. Uh, just subtract one from the other. And when you do that, you just, and, and collect terms effect properly, you end up getting this particular expression that you're seeing on this slide. Notice that the intercept will drop out. So I've now rewritten my regression in such a way that every variable is written uh, from every variable and subtracting its mean. Now my goal is to get it to reflect the z-score, a standardized variable. So to do that, I have to divide by its standard deviation. So step one is where I divide the left-hand side by the standard deviation of y, which is sigma y hat. Now, if I do this operation on the left-hand side, I have to repeat it on the right-hand side. And therefore, every single, every single, uh, sorry, uh, every single term in the right-hand side is also divided throughout by sigma y hat. 
So now in the left hand side, we have the standardized version of uh, the y variable, and I'm calling that z sub y, z with a subscript of y, telling me it's the z score program. Now I also want every single x variable to reflect its standardized version. So in order to do that, I divide by its particular standard deviation, and to ensure that the operations are evened out, I also multiply it by the standard deviation. So if I multiply and divide by the same constant, then the operations balance out. So I can, I, I just go ahead and repeat this process for every single uh, term on the right-hand side. So sigma one hat is just the standard deviation of x1, sigma two hat is for x2, and so on, up to sigma k hat. Now, when I do this, notice that this particular part, x1 minus x1 bar by sigma one hat, is just the standardized version of the x1 variable xki minus xk bar by sigma k, uh, k hat, that's just the standardized version of the xk variable. Of course, I now have uh, a slightly more involved expression as, as the coefficient there, but not to bother. Now, once we do this, I can just simply rewrite this particular expression in this manner that you see right here. So z score for y is now being regressed on all of the regressors in their standardized versions. So x1 standardized is given by z1, x2 standardized is given by z2, and so on, up to zk, and then there's an error term. Now, notice that the coefficients on z1 are given a slightly different notation. They are b hats, and the b hat is expanded down here. That's just the coefficient, but that's not to worry. So these coefficients for the regressors, uh, for the standardized regressors, are called standardized coefficients. In practice, in research, they're also, in literature, they're also called beta coefficients, which is slightly uh, confusing because we've been using beta hats uh, so far. So let's just call them standardized coefficients. So what's the benefit of doing the regression like this? Let's see in an example. Uh, and before that, okay, let me summarize this. Now, the way you interpret that beta hat coefficient is for a standard deviation increase in your x variable, how does your y change? Uh, given that y and x are both in standard deviation forms, the, regression, the interpretation would be if my particular regressor xj changes by one standard deviation, then y changes by beta hat, b hat j standard deviations. We'll see an example and then it'll make a lot more sense. But the key uh, advantage of doing the standardization is that the scale of the regressors becomes irrelevant. Uh, you're just talking of every regressor in the same unit of standard deviations and that just makes comparison a lot easier. Now, because every regressor is in the same scale, we could just directly look at the coefficients of every single uh, regressor and whichever one is the largest in magnitude it naturally then has the largest effect on the y variable. And that, so we can just compare all the coefficients that we're getting for every, sing, every single uh, coefficient in the regression. Whichever one is the largest in magnitude has the most uh, sizable effect on your y variable. And we can do this comparison because everything is in the same unit. Everything is in standard deviations. So because of this, we can just gauge how important a particular regressor is by looking at the size of the coefficient. And this wasn't feasible before standardization. You won't be able to compare different coefficients which are in different scales and say one is bigger than the other. You can't do that in the earlier case, but now that you've standardized it all in the same unit, you can make such comparisons. So to give you an example, if we were regressing the price of let's say houses on a bunch of variables, we're looking at, uh, so NOx here uh, talks about, uh, it measures pollution, Crime measures criminal activity in that neighborhood. And then you have a bunch of characteristics that uh, attributes of the house. So the number of rooms, distance to a particular place, and a few other characteristics. So that's our original regression model. And now when we standardize every single variable and then run the regression, notice that all of the variables now have a Z prefix telling us that these are all the standardized variables. Okay, so this coefficient of minus 0.340, the way I'll interpret that, is for a one unit, one standard deviation uh, increase in pollution, 
the house price falls by 0 0.34 standard deviations. For a one standard deviation increase in criminal activity, house price falls by 1.4 standard deviations. For a one standard deviation increase in the number of rooms, house price goes up by 0.5 standard deviations. So that's how you make the interpretations. Now we can also directly compare the different coefficients, their sizes, and say which is better than the other, which is greater than the other. So if you compare the coefficient on pollution and on crime, turns out the coefficient on pollution is about 2.4 times the, uh, the coefficient on crime. So we can say that the standard deviation change in pollution has an impact that is 2.4 times greater than the standard deviation change in crime. So we can say that statement because everything is now standardized. And the largest ever coefficient that you see is for the rooms. So it turns out that that's the most important determinant of house prices. So this is how uh, we put, we use standardized literations and I'm out of time. So for the next uh, section, I'll see you in a different video.